Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Jesse Warden here. Today we're going to finish our part two, which is understanding pure functions. And we're going to cover our second rule, which is the same inputs must have the same output. So if you give certain things in there or nothing, you should always get the same result, no matter how many times you call it or wherever you call it. There's a range of purity with this rule, and you gotta figure out what your definition of purity is and how far that really goes. Uh, the reference problem. So when you're dealing with OOP or non-OOP, even functional programming, you have references by references rather than by vowel. Give an array to a people and reference it with a variable, they don't make a copy of the array. They all point to the same one in memory. So if you modify it here, it modifies it over here, right? Quantum entanglement in programming. Randomness, Wait, how is it pure if it's random? How does that work exactly? And lastly, booms and errors. So anytime you have an exception, is it really pure? The Python community has embraced, at least the non-lab coats, the non-data scientists, have embraced exception handling, programming through dealing with different types of exceptions. We're gonna cover those today. We will do a log equals console log to save ourselves some typing. We won't even use semicolons or vars or cons at this point. We're just gonna go uber raw, start from scratch. So let's take the simplest possible function you could do. And that is always true, returns true. And you know what, I'll put a semicolon just to make it immaculate. This is an immaculate function because guess what it always does, right? It always returns true. So this is a function that takes no inputs and always returns true. If we run it, we get a true. So far, so good. What happens if we pass it cow? We run it, it returns true. Okay, what if we call this twice, then pass it cow? Does anything change? Nope, so far, so good. We're quite along the way on a path of purity. What if we give it a number? Does that confuse it? Nope. Four trues all around, doesn't matter. That's a pretty impressive always true. Well, what happens if we make a grenade? and then we throw that grenade at our immaculate pure function. What could possibly, possibly go wrong? So we'll say log always true and give it a parameter of kapow. Oh, that didn't work. It went boom. So no return value there, folks. It actually exploded before it could possibly even run. We see we've got some of the simplest functions, requires no inputs, always has the same output, and even that doesn't work because of exceptions or errors. In this list of friends, if we want to get all the humans out of it, we'll write a get human function. So this get human function takes a name in of what human we want to get from that list. Let me expand this just a bit. And it loops through the list, gets the item, that I is, it loops through, goes I, I, I. If the item is human and its name equals to whatever we pass in, it gives us. Otherwise, it returns nothing, which is the same thing as undefined. We can call it twice with Jesse. So we'll say log get human me. Then we'll call it twice just for good measure to make sure that we didn't affect anything. Same input, same output. So far, so good. We get an object. That's the Jesse human object. So this is the one we were wanting. This is the one we were expecting and it works multiple times. Fantastic. What happens if we add a function to remove the humans from that friends list? So I have this function called remove humans. It takes a list of friends and goes through them and says, if that type equals human, get rid of them. So we'll clear this out and we'll add a couple log statements. We'll say log before friends. We'll print out our list of friends here. We'll then remove the humans. We only want people that are non-human. Homie G is considered human. What's up, Homie G? Holmes is also considered human. What's up, Holmes? You are human. I don't know how that's relevant to programming, but we're gonna hit clear, we hit run, and you can see our friends up here has the humans of Jesse and the humans of Albus. I don't know who this guy is. It might be Dumbledore. Don't know. Down here, no humans left. They're all gone. So we've mutated or changed the array. We've gotten rid of all the humans. So now what happens when we take the exact same function we had before, where we said get humans of Jesse, which we turned on Jesse. We caught it multiple times. Here it works. Down here it does not. Before here, Jesse, down here, undefined. Same function, same input, completely different output. That is because the reference of the data that it's outside of the function. So it's not its function's fault. He didn't actually do anything internally. He just returned an item. He didn't affect it or modify its properties or anything. But he is unfortunately affected by the state outside of his control. Those of you familiar with closures will recognize, hey, we could actually put this in a closure and keep it private 
But even if he's inside the mega powerful closure, he's still going to have this friends be mutated and you'll get the same result. Even with a nice, almost pure function, it can still be affected by things outside. And this is what, when we talk about the reference problem, you pass in arrays or objects or classes, you got to be careful because even if you have a nice pure looking function, it can still be affected by state outside. And that's from references. Okay, I swore I wouldn't talk about math, but I'm going to do it. We have a sum function, it takes a and b and adds it. So the most common pure functions that you see are math-based, and I think they're ridiculous to teach, until you start recognizing that the mathematical concepts of basic addition fail. Imagine if you said, hey, one plus one, what do you equal? And he just never responded, <laughs> like ever. That would be completely unuseful, right? Well, that's what happens when you don't have the same output from the same input. So let's test our basic fundamental laws of the universe. So far, so good. One plus one is two. Okay. We are intact. We're not in Earth 2, where Jesse Warden is president. It'd be kind of cool, right? My first order of business, everyone gets a puppy. Unless you're allergic. Or you just don't like dogs. And you like cats instead. Oh, this is complicated. See, that's why I'm not president. My first edict, which sounds awesome. It's a complete and utter failure. I think I'll stick to programming. How could you possibly mess up addition, right? Let's go crazy. Let's do log sum of negative 2.7, add it to math.infinity, that's forever. Can you add negative 2.7 to forever? Well, JavaScript can, because it's awesome. It's not a number, which actually, per the ECMAScript community, is a number. But here's the good news. Call it multiple times, get the same result. So, same inputs, same outputs. So far, so good. This is why functional programming people like math, because it's hard to break. So let's keep going. Let's do some crazy stuff. Jesse, can you define crazy? Sure, let's add an array to an array. It can be done in Python, right? Why can't you do it in JavaScript? Okay, empty string. Uh, not bad, I guess. <laughs> but same input, same output. So far, so good. Let's do the whole crazy thing that was funny years ago, but is not a problem anymore, of object plus array. Let's see what that gives us. And we'll do it multiple times. And then we'll reverse it, like Missy Elliott and see if that affects the output. It won't. No need for anticipation. So we run object, object, object. Same thing, same input, same outputs. Oh, I know, randomness. Let's do that. Let's do sum of one and then add right now <laughs> with milliseconds since epoch. How could that possibly be different? There's no way, right? Oh, looks the same to me. It looks like we're almost pure, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what if we hold up, wait a minute, let me put some randomness in it. Technically, the response to that was boom, but work with me here. Sum of one, new date, value of, clear it, run it. Oh, it's a somewhat different. You were almost pure until you waited a hundred milliseconds and then it all came crashing down. How pure is pure? So this is where strong typing really helps out that you really do in fact pass a number like they do in TypeScript. You say, look dude, pass a number or some valid number that's not NAN, which is considered a number in some typing circles. Add some objects here. I'm gonna take me and we're gonna make me have a birthday and verify that my age, if you add one, I do, in fact, age one year. Before we do that, let's just test out the function, see if it works twice. So, cool. So we can pass in my age. It adds twice. Well, what happens if I really do have a birthday in the middle of this video? And then I talk like this because I'm old, but I'm coding Haskell, you know. The computers code themselves. Jesse, you sound like your throat is sore when you sound old. So now if we run it, what is that? Same function, same input, but completely different output. Again, outside state affects us even though we didn't do anything. Now you could argue that this is technically now 38. Sure, but that's not what I'm looking at. It says this. <laughs> and this is an address to this, which is an address to this, which is this. Pretty simple example. These are often a lot larger over multiple files and or classes. And so you can see that even with a really simple function, it can still be affected by things outside of its world. Explain to me how this could possibly be pure. We're going to get right meow like we did before. So this will get uh, basically right now. What is the date? Graphy. Let's copy pasta coding. FTW. Clear this out. Run it. Oh, it's right now. So far, so good. Yet again, if you set the 
timeout, which I'm not going to show, it'll get a completely different date. So randomness, it makes things very difficult to be pure. This is why people wrap them in things. The last part of the puzzle is the purity test around errors. So in theory, if you call a function and you get one, two, or error, as long as you get the same error each time with the same input, is that technically pure? Well, maybe, right? If you're in a Java world with throwable or TypeScript where you're expecting that particular runtime exception and you use a library to define it, but let's talk about git boom here. We're gonna make a teensy boom function. I'm gonna pass it a message and it's gonna give us a new error. It's not gonna throw one, it's just gonna create one for us. And whatever we pass in, it's gonna give it back. So in here, the browser, in this case, JSBin, but it could be anywhere you're running in the browser. It could be the console. We're going to console dir that out. Console dir is a way to force this object to be treated as an object in the console for browsers and kind of extrapolate and show all the properties. So if you've ever logged out an object like this and seen the properties of A and 1, console dir just kind of forces it to do its thing. So we're going to do console dir, log it out, run. So we get an error, that's great, but what is it down here? Let's take a look at this guy. Clear this out, run it again. There we go. So now you can see you can actually extrapolate its properties. In this case, message, you know, which is about the same, and the stack. So let's trace out that stack. Let's go result.stack. Okay, we get an error, boom, so far so good. Well, let's take this exact same JavaScript. Really simple, right? Oh, that's the setup. Yes, he said really simple. He's gonna be clever now. Not really. We're going to paste this into Firefox. I haven't used this browser in years, but it has an interesting property around exceptions that Chrome does not. So we're going to say result is git boom of Uno, same exact string, even has the same quote type, single quotes instead of double. Now, when we console dir the result out, what the, what? What is this? Column number, file name? Man, we don't have any of this in here. What happened if I do result call, 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 what, huh? And what's the other properties here? Ooh, like line number? So yeah, we get an error, but completely different. And even worse, print out the stack, right? Uno, get boom anonymous. Let's print out the stack here. We'll say result stack. Yeah, those stacks don't look the same to me either. <laughs> so this is also why errors are not considered pure. And this is why I don't like using the Python philosophy that errors are okay as long as you check for type or type of error and respond appropriately. I think it's ridiculous. Just don't throw errors. Don't create grenades. I learned that way back in the action script three days and it's held true in the JavaScript days. As you can see, that is what happens with booms or errors, that errors can't be depended on to be unique either. But as you've seen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that the same inputs should equal the same outputs if it's a pure function. And it's very easy to make it not do that. A variety of ways to basic, basic, basic JavaScript, right? Using for loops and the function keyword, not doing arrow functions, any of that. It shows the range of purity. How pure is it really? I mean, if you get NAND back, is that okay? Because it's technically the value and it works every time, but you're expecting a number. Is that a type problem or is that a purity problem? And if you start modifying things outside, as you've seen from the references, that state can really affect the function both internally and externally, and it's not his fault. Whether he's nested in a function closure or not, doesn't matter. The other one, randomness, through dates, math.random, through getting different data from different servers behind load balancers. All these problems are now yours because you get pure-ish function, but his response is not his own, so it breaks. So I'll show you how to fix that too in another video. Finally, the booms and errors, as you've seen, errors aren't always the same either, even from a basic, basic function. When you go into different environments like Node, which I didn't show in this video, but even just Firefox, completely different browser, different types of errors with different properties and behave different ways. So if you got any other questions, hit me up in the comments. You can email me on email, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope this was helpful and see you tomorrow.